All right, we are going to jump into a great lab here involving standard ACLs, extended ACLs, and placement. Going to go over a lot of concepts that we've been introduced to in the last couple of videos. And here's our network. I'm actually using a Cisco router for a host here because I want you to see what some of these denied pings, hopefully denied pings, uh, are going to look like from a Cisco router perspective. On router 2, We've got, the, we've got the network 11, as I'll call it, network 11, 11, 11, 0, slash 24, and that is actually router 1 down there serving as our host. Routers 2 and 3 are connected via a WAN, 172.12.123.0, slash 24. Router 3 has a couple of networks attached to it, 33.33.33.0, slash 24, and a money bag server on our network 44, that's 44444444 slash 24. So the first thing I've done is just ping from one end to the other. That's exactly what you ought to do at the beginning of a lab like this. Just make sure you have the connectivity to begin with because then when you start filtering it, if it doesn't come out right, you end up troubleshooting the filtering. The problem was something that was in the setup of the lab to begin with. Always test it. I, I know I hammer away at that. But as I see people progress in their studies, they just set up a lab and they don't test their basic connectivity. And then it just leads to a lot of unnecessary troubleshooting. So what I've done here from router 1 is ping the all 33's address on router 3 on that one segment. Went through, no problem at all. And then I pinged our e-commerce server at dot 4 on the 44 network and all was well. So we've got kind of a mini CCI lab coming up here. And it's certainly the kind of thing you could see on your CSENT or CCNA exam. It's just being given a list of requirements and nothing tricky, but as long as you give them the desired result and you follow what they say, you're going to be fine. Because sometimes people go on a little too hard about, you know, gee, the Cisco exam questions are tricky. Sometimes they're just detailed. There's a big difference between detailed and tricky. So let's watch this and watch these requirements. First off, a standard ACL has to be used. Then we want to prevent any host on network 11 from accessing our money bag slash e-commerce server along with any other hosts that we may add to that same network segment in the future. All other networks should be allowed to access the 44 network. Now half of our work is done by making us use a standard ACL, but this is where the confusion used to come in for CSENT and CCNA candidates. I got this question all the time until I added it to a book of mine years ago, and I, this will really help you out. Your instinct is to stop the traffic as close to the source as possible. That's always the way you should approach an ACL in the real world. But if you're using a standard ACL, doing so can have an effect, a bad side effect, of filtering too much traffic. If we put the ACL on router 2 on either interface, the one facing the network 11 or the one facing the WAN, uh, it's going to block all traffic sourced from network 11 because it's a standard ACL. That's all it knows how to do. So that's going to have a lot of unwarranted side effects because let's say 11 had some important data that it needed to send to network 33 here. Or maybe router 3 is the hub and that's the way out to the end. You know, who knows? what it could be set up as, but you don't want to block all the traffic coming from network 11, just that headed to this subnet, the 44 subnet. Putting a standard ACL on router 2 period is going to block too much traffic. The only answer is to put the ACL on router 3, but then we have a choice of three interfaces. Well, we can rule out the 33 network. We're not going to put the ACL on the interface leading to that one with this topology. There's no reason to do that. But what about the other two interfaces? Do we block it coming in to router 3 on the serial interface? Or do we block it going out to the 44 network on that Ethernet interface? Well, again, if we block it on router 3 as it's coming in, we're blocking all traffic from network 11 and that would prevent network 11 from sending anything to the 33 network. So we can't do that either. The only real answer here is to put the ACL on the interface that leads directly to network 44. That's the only way to handle this. So we'll go ahead and write that now and we'll test it out. So let's go to router 3. Oh, 
Let's write an access list number eight. We haven't done that yet. We'll review our syntax. We're going to deny. And which network will we deny? 11, 11, 11, 0. We know the wildcard mask here. And we know total log, and that's it. Now we'll write a line that permits everything. And that's it. So we're good. We've got our ACL. Now we'll go back over to router 1. And we'll try to ping the one we don't want to be able to ping. And we can still ping it. So what the heck is the problem here? Let's do some troubleshooting. What's the problem? I have the ACL written. I'm denying the right network. And what did I not do? Troubleshooting isn't always noting what got done. It's also noting what didn't get done. We didn't apply it to the interface. You'd be surprised how often that comes up <laughs> in lab work. You really would be. We wrote the ACL on router 3 that we can see at the top of the screen, but we didn't apply it. So we did decide that was going to go on Ethernet E0. The command we know is IP access group. And we know it's number 8. And here's our last decision. Inbound or outbound? How are we filtering it? How are we filtering it on this Ethernet interface? We're filtering it as it goes out because that's how it's going to get to that particular subnet. That's the way we've got to do it. So let's go ahead and do an out there. And now let's send some pings over. And look at this. It's our old friend u.u.u. .u .u. You thought you'd never see him again. See what I did there? I know. I'm sorry. But seriously, that's what you're going to see on a Cisco router if you send a ping and it's been blocked somehow. You're going to see the same thing we saw earlier with a static route where the downstream router didn't know what to do with it. Well, here, the downstream router, in a way, is telling you what to do with it. It's telling you to stick it in your ear because it's not going to let you ping dot four. That's exactly what we want. And again, we stuck with all the requirements. That's the important thing. Uh, I know the Cisco exam questions can be a pain in the butt sometimes. I would never say they aren't. But don't psych yourself out about it. They're not that tricky. They can just be detailed. And this is the kind of thing you got to watch because this is the kind of question where I'd have somebody right saying, you know, I swear, you know, I got, I got all this stuff right, etc. And then they'd mention this, not discussing the exact exam question, of course. But they'd say, oh, you know, I'd review some topics with them. They'd say, oh, any ACL, you know, always goes close to the source. Well, not if it's a standard when it doesn't. It doesn't work that way. So now that we've looked at how to work with a standard ACL, we're going to do something a little more real world here in a minute because, you know, we're done. But however, that's a really overall efficient choice in the real world. Because first off, router one is sending packets that have no chance of getting to the destination. Well, that's wasted effort, but, uh, you know, there's only so much you could do there. But router two is having to process them then. That's the key for the first point. Router two's got to process them. Router two is going to send them across the WAN. The WAN bandwidth gets sucked up by packets that are going to get stopped over there anyway. And as we talked about in the previous video, if router 3 is filtering on an outbound level, on an outbound access, which it is because it had to, then it's actually routing the packets. It's taking the time to route the packets. And then before the packets get the transmission, transmission queue, router 3 says, hey, wait a minute. We're filtering those packets anyway. So there's a lot of wasted work going on there. So an extended ACL in the real world would be a far superior choice because we can put that on router 2 and traffic that has no chance to get to this subnet over here will be stopped before it crosses the WAN. One more point I want to make about the requirements that were listed. And this is the kind of thing, again, it's not tricky. They're, it's right in front of us, but we got to watch it. We notice that it says prevent any host on the network 11 from accessing our money bag server at dot four along with any other hosts we may add in the future. Because some people would look at this question and say, oh, okay, you know, we're blocking access to 44, 44, 44.4. So when I write the extended ACL, I'll use that host address. 
well, that's not what we want to do here. We want to block access to that entire network 44 because the question is clearly saying along with any other host we may add in the future. So tell you what we're going to do. I'm going to break here for a minute. And when we come back to the next video, we will go ahead. I'll remove the previous config in front of you so you can see how easy that is. We're just going to put no in front of a lot of stuff we wrote. And then we will start this lab from the beginning and go to the extended ACL, of course. So I will see you on the next video, and we'll write some extended access less.